Hey, this is Mr. Buffington, and we're going to be solving quadratics today using the quadratic formula. Before we get started, I wanted to review back some of the other ways we've talked about solving quadratics. We've talked about finding a, if we have a perfect square trinomial, we factor it like that. If we have difference of squares, we factor it in this manner. If we have a trinomial like this, this, or this, we factor them all to get our solutions. Now this is in a lesson on all the different ways that we can solve quadratics. I just wanted to do a quick review. We've solved quadratics in a lot of different ways. What would you do now, knowing that you can, we've solved them in about five different ways? What would you do if I told you that there's actually one way to solve every type of quadratic, whether it's a difference of squares, a perfect square, or one that just needs to be factored in one of the many ways we've talked about factoring? Well, here it is. And the quadratic formula is the way that we can solve any quadratic equation. At first you were maybe thinking, wow, Mr. Buffington, why were you holding back on me and not just telling me this at the beginning? But it looks a little bit more complicated, so we're not quite as happy with Mr. Buffington right now. Those other ways are faster, more efficient ways of solving quadratics. But if you get quadratics that are more challenging, it's good to know that no matter what type of quadratic you have, you can solve it using the quadratic equation. All right, so let's see how this works exactly. What's all of this A and B and C stuff that's in there? A quadratic equation will look like this. A times x squared, B times x, and C is the number that's left over there. So here's an example where A is 3, B is 4, and C is 5. Notice that I said A was 3, not 3x three squared. A is just the number, just the coefficient in front of x squared. It, is, it does not include the variable. So B is? 4 and C is 5. And then after you know that, it's just a matter of substitution. Let's show, show you here how it works. We're going to just start working with them now. So I have x squared plus 9x minus 22. So my value for A is whatever number is in front of x squared. In this case, it's implied that there's a 1 there. So you'll notice everywhere in this equation, I'm going to put the value of 1 where I see an A. Where I see a B, here and here, I'm going to put the value of 9. And where I see a, the value of C, I'm going to put in negative 22. Notice how the negative does stay with the number. So that would be my first step. Again, I've substituted B as 9 in there. A the two places we say an A, it's a value of 1, and negative 22 is the only place we see a C is up there. So to simplify this, I'm going to start out by doing 9 squared, which is 81, and 4 times 1 times negative 22, negative 4, I should say, times 1 times negative 22 will give us a positive 88. We'll join those two terms together to give us 169. Notice, or I did do multiply 2 times 1 as well. But that negative 9 has stayed out front. At this point, what we need to do is worry about this plus and minus. What I like to do is to separate this into two separate equations. One is negative 9 plus the square root of 169, and the other one is negative 9 minus the square root of 169 over 2. So you'll see over here that I have that split. I also went ahead and solved the square root of 169 is 13. So you can see that I've set it up as two separate equations. I'm going to solve this one on the left and then this one on the right. And this will be the pattern that I use throughout. Nine, negative 9 plus 13 is 4. 4 divided by 2 is 2. Negative 9 minus 13 is negative 22 divided by 2 gives us 11. So x is equal to 2 and 11. That's negative 11, by the way. It's 2 and negative 11. So that, what that means is that if we substitute 2 or negative 11 into this original equation, they would be equal to 0 equals 0. Those are the two places that that 
quadratic equation crosses the y the x axis. All right, let's look at another one. x squared plus 3x equals 5. Uh oh. With this one, what we need to do first is subtract 5 from both sides of the equation so that we have a nice trinomial in standard form. Now we can substitute 1 equals a, 3 equals b, and negative 5 is equal to c. All right, so again, all we did was subtract 5 from both sides of the equation so we could set it up being equal to 0. Other than that, we're going to follow the same exact process. 3 gets substituted in where you see b. 1 gets substituted where you see a, here and here. And c value is negative 5. We'll multiply 3 squared is 9. 2 times 1 on the bottom is 2. 4 times 1 times negative 4 times 1 times negative 5 gives us a positive 20. And then we end up with this when we join 9 plus 20. This one here is a little bit different than the last because it's not a nice number. The square root of 29 doesn't give us something nice. So we're going to approximate the square root of 29 being equal to about 5.4. At this point, we, sway, we change the equal sign to an approximately equal to sign, and we estimate, or we reduce it down and, um, to the tenth place right there. So now I'll just do negative 3 plus 5.4, which gives us a, about 2.4. And we divide 2.4 divided by 2 to get our approximate answer. On the other side here, I'll take negative 3 minus 5.4. gives me negative 8.4. Divide that by 2 for my other answer. So x is equal to about 1.2 and negative 4.2. This would not have been possible to factor in the other methods or to solve using the other methods that we've learned. We could not factor or solve this using difference of squares, perfect squares, or factoring of trinomials. This is the only method that we could have used to solve this, this quadratic. Let's look at another one that, again, is a little bit more difficult. We have a number now in front of x squared. We haven't dealt with that a whole lot. But with the quadratic equation, that doesn't matter. We just take that 2 and plug it in everywhere we see an a. Negative 5 will be our value for b. And 3 will be our value for c. Here we go. So negative, negative 5 becomes positive 5. Negative 5 squared goes in there. And then it's negative 4 times 2 and times 3. Negative 5 squared gives us a positive 25. 2 times 2 on the bottom becomes 4. And 4 times 2 times 3 is 24. We have our negative there. So we're going to solve that by joining 25 minus 24 is 1. Square root of 1, we're going to divide it into two equations. Take the square root of 1 is 1. 5 plus 1 over 4 is 6 over 4. 6 over 4 is approximately equal to 3 over 2. It's actually exactly equal to that. It's just a reduced fraction. All right, 5 minus 1 is 4. 4 divided by 4 is 1. So here are our, our two answers x is equal to 3 over 2, and x is equal to 1. Again, we couldn't have solved this using just guessing numbers, right? 3 over 2. We couldn't have guessed that as a factor. So it helps us to be able to go ahead and just say, yeah. Let's use the quadratic equation. And this is one of those times when the quadratic equation is useful. There are ways to solve this type of trinomial, but the quadratic equation will always work. And if you get fast at it, it'll help so that you don't have to guess and try different methods. You can just use the one method. All right. What happens when we get no b value in the middle? Normally, we have something times x squared something times x, and then a number afterwards. But if we don't have a b value, we could assume, or instead try and use this as 4x squared plus 0x minus 9 equals 0. 0 times x is 0. 
So we wouldn't write it in if it was 0. It wouldn't make any sense. Why would we write in all the things 0 could be multiplied times? So instead of writing that in, if it does not exist, it means that that value is 0. So we're going to plug the value of 0 in everywhere we see a b. That's going to make our equation actually a little bit easier. Look at this. 0 plus or minus 0 squared minus 4 times our a value, which is 4, and our b value, which is negative 9, all over 2 times our a value. 0 squared is 0. This 0 remains the same. Negative 4 times 4 times negative 9 is 144, and 2 times 4 is 8. When we take that 0 plus 144, we'll get 144, which is a nice number because 144 the square root of 144, I should say, is 12. So now we have 0 plus 12 and 0 minus 12 using our plus and minus um, symbol right there. 0 plus 12 is a positive 12. 12 over 8 is the same as 3 over 2. 0 minus 12 is negative 12. Negative 12 over 8 gives us a negative 3 over 2. And that would be our final solution. So again, we found the solution using the quadratic equation, even when we're missing parts. And the last method that, I, or the last um, equation that I'm going to show, is when we're missing the c value. So we have 4x squared minus 8x plus 0 is equal to 0. Our c value is not included in this equation because we don't write when we add 0. That just doesn't make any sense. So instead, we're not going to include that, which means everywhere we see a c value, we're going to plug in the value of 0. You can see that right here. 0 was substituted in for our value of c. a is a positive 4, and b is negative 8. This time I wrote in that it was negative, negative 8. The last time we had a negative b value, I just immediately converted it to being positive. Negative, negative 8 just means positive 8. Negative 8 squared will give us 64. 0 times anything gives us 0, so I didn't even have to do that calculation. And 2 times 4 is 8. My next step, I'm going to subtract 64 minus 0, which gives me 64, and then I'll set that up over here square root of 64 is 8. So I'll have 8 plus 8 divided by 8, and 8 minus 8 divided by 8. Let's solve the left side first. 8 plus 8 is 16. 16 divided by 8 is 2. So one of my x values is that x is equal to 2. Let's go on this side. 8 minus 8 is 0. 0 divided by 8 is 0. So x can be equal to 0, or it could be equal to 2. All right, those are the two places that our graph will cross the x-axis. Those are the two solutions to this equation. We plug in 2 in there for x, and this side would be equal to 0. We plug 0 in there, and this side would also be equal to 0. And that's how we use the quadratic equation to solve quadratics. Here are a couple of examples now. There are six questions I put up there. What I want you to do is to pause the recording and try using the quadratic equation to solve those. See what you end up getting. All of these ones here you should be able to solve using the quadratic equation. And just to check your answers, here are the solutions. Um, I did stick one in there that didn't have a solution just to see what would happen. And so if you plug this one in and you were getting a little frustrated, that would be this one. So this one here does not have a solution. All the other ones, you should be able to have gotten those solutions when you solve using the quadratic equation. Hope that session was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.